Australia sweltered over the weekend, but our brave firefighters weren't the only ones to suffer from the heat. We're getting used to it this summer, hurly dooly. It's uh, it's been so hot day after day. I think we've had a record number of days over 40. So yeah. Yeah. hurly dooly, not, not, that's not what great. I say. There's a phrase, hurly dooly. Hurly dooly, it's, right. it's a weather term. <laughs> <laughs> Let's run the country with holy dooly. Oh, oh, holy dooly. I think everyone's brains have melted. <laughs> also feeling the burn was our Prime Minister. The finger pointing continued after emails showed senior officials from the Prime Minister's department were told that the freak storm taking out power lines and not renewables were to blame for the statewide blackout in South Australia last year. Not only did he lie to the nation, he lied to the nation during an emergency. But perhaps the PM had his reasons for doubting renewables. If you are stuck in an elevator, if the lights won't go on, <laughs> if your fridge <laughs> is thawing out, everything the fridge is thawing out because the power is gone, you are not going to be concerned about the particular source of that power. I'm more concerned that you've got a fridge in your elevator. <laughs> Now, the transition to renewables is complicated, but with record temperatures we're suffering through, something has to happen. And burning coal to stay cool is just cooking the planet, and if that keeps up, it's going to lead to more catastrophic meltdowns like this. Holy yeah. dooly, not, that's not what I say. <laughs> There's a phrase, holy dooly. Here to look into the heat wave and the controversial power outages, Kitty Flanagan! Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Chuck. Well... Blackouts, they're a thing now. It's like Britain during the war, only a bit less bomby. <laughs> On the weekend, I too was a victim. I was in Wagga Wagga and got caught up in a two-hour blackout that affected 6,000 homes in the Riverina district, or as I like to call it, Dark Saturday. Uncomfortably warm, warm in Wagga Wagga. Well, we, we know for a fact that reliance on renewable energy is not what's causing these power outages. So, what's the problem, Kitty? I'm glad you asked. Let's find out in my new segment. This is Aircon Crash Investigation. Now, imagine this glass of water is the state power grid. Usually, we all just sip from the grid mm -hmm. and there's plenty of time to refill it from the various sources of power. But in extreme conditions, everyone starts gulping the water faster than it can be refilled and eventually it runs out. Yeah, Kitty, that seems a bit simplistic. Thank you. Now, <laughs> strap in, it's about to get simplistica. It's interesting what happened in South Australia last week. It got hot and people started gulping the water. And even though there was a bit of water left in the glass... Uh, by that you mean the grid? Correct. Yeah. At 6.04pm, the water... Power. Thank you. ...stopped flowing and 90,000 homes were plunged into darkness. <laughs> Actual black box recordings taken from people's homes at the time of the power outage show the tragedy unfolding. Hey, Dal, kettle's not working. Well, have a cold drink, you idiot. It's 40 freaking degrees. Mum! TV's gone off! Mum! Jeff! Jeff! Did you turn the aircon off your f***ing head? <laughs> Turns out it wasn't Jeff the fuckhead who turned the air on. <laughs> it was the Australian energy market operator. Get this, they shut the power off before it all ran out. Well, why'd they do that? Load shedding. Load shedding? Yeah, let me show you how it works. The AEMO could see people were gulping the water faster than the jug could generate it. And they worked out that if just a few homes, like 90,000, went without... <laughs> gulping for just 40 minutes, then that would give them enough time to refill. <laughs> it actually sounds quite logical when you explain it that way. Mm. I know. I mean, look, there's no question unexpected blackouts cause great hardship, Chuck. As I found out when I spoke to someone who lived through the recent Wagga Wagga blackout. Yeah, I remember the power went out at about 9pm. <laughs> um, everything went dark. No TV, no lights, no internet. No <laughs> so I just went to bed. Um, two hours later, power comes back on, I'm fast asleep, all of a sudden TV's blaring, lights are blinding me. It was truly, truly frightening, but, you know, I made it. I'm here today and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> you for me. Thank you. Wow. Blackout survivor. Some would say hero. Kitty Flanagan there. <laughs> Talking about her recent ordeal. 
Yeah, fascinating. But can we look at the bigger picture here for a minute, Kitty? These blackouts are being politicised and used as a way to promote fossil fuels. Sorry, I don't quite understand what you're saying. Could you maybe use my jugs? Yeah, me? OK. Um, <laughs> Show me what you mean. All right, so there are some politicians who are saying the only answer for our power needs is just coal. <laughs> Okay, well, that's clearly not the answer, because who wants to drink that? I mean, let's face it, there will be more blackouts, but if we can manage the time and place of blackouts, then people can prepare themselves. What we need is a national load-shedding schedule or a load-skedding schedule, if that's what we prefer. <laughs> because let's face it, no-one likes having a load shed all over them when they're not expecting it. Yeah, I, I hear that, Kitty, I, I hear that. I, actually, it almost makes... Sense. I really enjoyed the jug of water analogy as well. Do you think maybe next week you could come back and explain water shortages? Oh, mate, I'm already on it. Imagine this toaster is a jug of water. <laughs>